whenever we get into this side control position, side control can take on a lot of faces, just like guards can take on a lot of different faces. So you can have uh, multiple different kind of arrangements of your body in relation to his and still have a dominant position. Now, um, again, that's not just dealer's choice whenever I, I get to that position. I don't get to just decide, hey, I feel like doing this one. I need to read his energy that he's given me and see the obstacles and then use the most appropriate variation of side control for that given situation. So if we wind up in this kind of position here for side control and um, we get here like we've been doing so far, like this, sometimes um, if I can't really get underneath and he keeps on putting this form in my hip and I can't seem to scrape it up like I've been doing so far. Another alternative uh, variation that I can use is getting this underhook on this side, holding the shoulder, sliding this one from his head down here to his elbow. And once I slide this down to his elbow, I'm gonna pick this leg up, holding the elbow here this way, and I'm gonna slide my other leg through here. So now it can make a lot of pressure on his chest, making it difficult for him to breathe, hopefully and I'm holding and wrapping his arm on this side. From this position, we have some good attack options because uh, depending on how I'm controlling his arms and what he's doing with his arms, he's probably gonna wind up giving me some kind of submission opportunity. So um, a good way to look at this is by going all across the body and I'll do a straight arm, uh, a straight arm lock here, a bent arm lock, a bent arm lock, and a straight arm lock. So I have four things across the body. So if we get in this position, he's here, I slide down, pick this up, make space for me to bring my other leg through. And I'm gonna pick this up. The first submission that I'm gonna look for is if I can get this one isolated this way, I have the tip of his elbow, that little olecranon process, right in the palm of my hand, and I'm clamping right there around the elbow. I pick this up and I clamp his wrist now uh, in my armpit. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step above his head. I don't have to step necessarily right over into the wedge of his neck. I can step just over his head this way, keeping my underhook. And then I'm gonna take my elbow and push it toward my tailbone. And if you notice, he tapped because the leverage here is going to the elbow. Since I've isolated this and I've isolated the shoulder, or restricted the shoulder to some degree, and I'm pushing this down, it's hyperextending his arm, hopefully breaking it. So I get here, one, step, two. Sometimes whenever I go here to get this straight arm lock though, he winds up pulling that arm out somehow and it slips out this direction. If it slips out, I don't want to keep trying to do this little pummeling thing with him all day long. I'll take what he's giving me instead. If it slides out this direction, then I'm going to reach down. I'm going to pick up my own leg like this. Because it's bent, I'm going to go for a bent arm lock since he gave me that opportunity. I want to now figure for the legs on this side, locking his wrist into place. From here, if I go to slide back, the way he's going to try to alleviate some of the pressure on that shoulder is by bringing his head toward that arm, which helps to like line it up a little better and make it a little softer on him. For that reason, I'm going to go here and pull his head away from the lock and then scrape my hips back toward his hips, causing the submission on the shoulder lock. So now we have a straight arm lock, we have a bent arm lock. So let's look at the other side. If at any time in this process, he brings this arm here to frame against my neck like this, I have the ability to go here and go for this Americana like we talked about in a previous side control version. That's sometimes just as simple as here, resisting to make sure he's committed to it, finding the wrist this direction, and then sliding up, pushing this down to the floor here, and then dropping my hips, finishing the Americana on this side. This is a fast and explosive one, so we have to be careful whenever we're practicing any of these. The last option that we have, straight arm, bent arm, bent arm, to even it out is straight arm lock. If at any time he's hugging around me with his arms, like this, so this can make it difficult for me to get access to this one or to this one. So what I wanna to look to do from here is I'm gonna step over his head. So I'll push his face down, step over his head here, and then I'm gonna slide up, catching his tip of his elbow into the well of my elbow. At this point, I would like to get the flat of his wrist here pinched between my ear and my shoulder, sliding my hands up, gable gripping my hands, putting this thumb back here to this shoulder and crushing the arm on that side, hyperextending it. One more time, he's holding here around the trunk. I wanna frame, making sure I can step over his head. This may also help to release the pressure of his hold on me. And then I'm gonna slide up here, grab until this, uh, his tip of his elbow is in the well of mine. I gable grip my hands, pull my thumb back, pinch the wrist between my ear and shoulder, and crush the arm on that side. So those are some submission opportunities from scarf hold as a variation of side control.